United States China subsea internet cable rivalry. Hello and welcome to Nanping TV, where we discuss the latest developments in technology and how they affect our world. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that might not seem very exciting at first glance, but is actually crucial for the future of the internet subsea internet cable projects. Subsea internet cables are the backbone of the global internet, carrying more than 95% of all the international data traffic. These are fiber optic cables that transmit information. They can span thousands of kilometers across oceans and continents, connecting different regions and countries with high speed and reliable communication. But these cables are not just neutral infrastructure, they are also strategic assets that reflect the geopolitical interests and ambitions of the countries and companies that build and operate them. And right now, there is a fierce rivalry going on between the United States and China over who gets to control the vital links. The US has long been the dominant player in the subsea cable industry, with companies like Subcom and Google leading the way in building and owning cables around the world. The US government has also been actively involved in supporting and promoting these projects, seeing them as a way to enhance its global influence and security. A controversial communications equipment company called Subcom won a $600 million contract to build a subsea fiber optic internet project called Southeast Asia, Middle East, Western Europe 6, CME V6 shortly, with the American government support. The US State Department had advocated through its embassies to help Subcom win the contract, including warning other countries about the alleged security risks posed by the Chinese subsea cable builder company HMN Tech without providing any evidence, obviously. CMU V6 is a 19,200 km long subsea fiber optic cable which connects 12 countries between France and Singapore. The US both threatened and awarded the project investors help Subcom to win the project. The US offered $3.8 million worth of training grants to five telecom companies in countries on the cable's route in return for them choosing Subcom as the supplier. Washington threatened participating foreign telecom carriers telling them that the US was planning to impose crippling sanctions on Chinese company HMN Tech and they could lose their investment or HMN Tech could insert remote surveillance equipment inside the cable and have an access to the entire traffic of the system. Subcom won the CMU V6 project. China Telecom and China Mobile, which were due to own a combined 20% of the project, pulled out because the Chinese government wouldn't cooperate with US intelligence and security services. What is the force behind all this political pressure on other countries' telecom giants from the US government? It's Team Telecom. Former US President Trump signed an executive order with the aim of safeguarding US telecommunication networks from spies and cyber attacks in April 2020. The US government set up an interagency committee to execute the order. Team Telecom is run by the National Security Division of the Department of Justice. Team Telecom is headed by General Matthew Olson, a former general counsel for NSA and a former director of the National Counterterrorism Center under former US President Barack Obama from years 2011 to 2014. The committee's main task is stopping any cable from directly connecting US territory with mainland China or Hong Kong due to worries about Chinese espionage. But China is not sitting idle by. In recent years, China has emerged as a formidable challenger in the subsea cable market, with state-owned telecom firms and private companies investing heavily in building and operating cables that connect Asia, Africa, Europe and beyond. China sees these cables as a way to expand its economic and technological reach, as well as to counter US dominance. But the most importantly, this has direct impact on China's national sovereignty. Relying on the US-controlled internet would have dire consequences for China. One of the most ambitious Chinese projects is called EMA, Europe, Middle East, Asia, a $500 million cable network that would link Hong Kong to China's island province of Hainan before continuing its way to Singapore, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt and France. The project is led by HMN Technologies, the world's fastest rising subsea cable builder. 
Huawei Marine Networks rebranded itself as HMN Technologies at the beginning of 2020 and sold the company to Hengtong Group, which owns 81% of the company and the UK-based New Saxon in 2019, which owns 19% of the new venture. HMN Tech successfully completed over 108 projects worldwide, including 65,000 km of submarine cable with zero failures. Even though HMN Tech is not part of Huawei, it has been blacklisted by the US over national security concerns. As you can see, EMA project is intended to directly rival subcom controlled Simi V6. The Simi V6 project is backed by a consortium of more than a dozen global firms, including Microsoft and France telecom giant Orange. Both EMA and Simi V6 are expected to be completed by 2025 and will compete for customers and traffic in some of the most populous and dynamic regions of the world. But they also represent different visions and values for the future of the internet. The US-backed CMUV6 project claims to offer more openness, diversity and security for its users as it follows international standards and best practices for data protection and privacy. I would say quote unquote. The US government has also been actively lobbying other countries to shun Chinese cables, citing fears of espionage sabotage by Beijing. As with everything the US government does, this is another way to control other countries. In case some of those countries don't obey the US-made rules, they would lose their internet. The China-led EMA project claims to offer more affordability, efficiency and connectivity for its users, as it benefits from hefty subsidies from Beijing and lower costs from HMN Tech. The Chinese government has also been offering incentives and loans to other countries to join its cable network as part of its broader Belt and Road Initiative to boost trade and infrastructure along ancient Silk Road routes. So who will win this subsea cable war? And what will it mean for the rest of us who rely on these cables for our daily in online activities? Will we see more fragmentation and polarization of the internet along geopolitical lines? Or will we see more cooperation and integration of the internet as a global public good? Stay tuned for more Nanping TV videos. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye.